But the new Kaiju number 8 set for Union Arena is out, and I have a new deck list just for you. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mobby here, and I'm going to be giving you my full green deck list of every single card. We're going to talk about how the deck works and if I think it's a good one overall. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel as we grow here. I upload daily duels and deck profiles for a lot of anime TCGs. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, this is the first uh, Kaiju number 8 deck that we're going to be talking about. There's usually 2 to 3 archetypes per color, so there will be more uh, decks in the future, so stay tuned for that, as well as the Common Rider set, which is released at the same date as this one. So, this is a green deck that focuses on high ramping all the way up to an A cost, all revolving around Kafka Hibino as a raid source. And the late game, you have sort of resting, you have moving to the energy line, and you have KOing. So, it's a pretty strong deck. The only bad thing is you have a lot of setup. Let's talk about it. So, the first card we have here is the Kafka Hibino. I'm trying something a little different. I usually run around 10 zero costs. Today, it's going to be 12. So I, I got rid of all of the one cost here, and we'll go ahead and talk about the different energy sources. So this is a simple one, 1500, add this to your hand, green energy source, running four of these. Next off, we have Kikuro Shinomiya. This is a pretty decent zero cost card, 2000 BP, and, and trigger is active, plus 3000, which you always want to see in your decks, a very strong ability. Next off, we have Mina Ashirio. Ashiro, this is another zero cost. So these are all the all the uh, three zero costs here, uh, equaling up to 12. So on play, draw one, trash one. This deck, your only raid source is going to be Kafka, Hibino. And also the raid card is the Kaiju number eight. So you definitely want to be able to sift as much as possible. And the trigger is draw a card. All right, so really good stuff here. Next, we have a one cost here called Mysterious Larva. I'm running two of these because actually it's a really cool and really decent event card. So one cost, one action. Uh, look at the top six. You grab one character card and then you add it to your hand. However, if you grab the Kaiju number eight, then you get to get one of your AP and set it to active. So you're not always going to hit. However, there are 10 Kaiju number 8 cards in here, and hopefully you hit it. This is a really great card. It's going to make it so you can get your raid off you know, more consistently. Next off, we have another Hibino card. This is a 1 cost. On play, draw 1, trash 1. Once again, you need that sifting, that sifting. 2,500 BP. 2, 3, 4. Now, those are all the 1 costs. You have the Mysterious Larva, and you have the Hibinos. Next off, we have another Kikoru Shinomiya. And even though we are running like multiple uh, multiple Kikorus, they don't really do much in the deck. They're just really good for support cards. This one just makes it so your first turn and second turn is more consistent with 0 cost, and you love to see this plus 3,000. This one here is an energy source of plus 2 if active, and a really strong card. You're most likely going to keep this at the very bottom, so if you get like 3 or 4, this is going to be your energy line for the whole game these guys right here one two three four next off we have another um, energy source however this is a three this is another mina ashiro this is what step so this is really good to play in the front line and moving it back later three thousand and trigger is draw a card so along with the kikoru shinomiya these ones are going to be your best ones to put in the back line now we have another three cost Kafka Hibino on play draw one card. This is going to be your four colors of the deck. Play a two or less uh, character with one AP in your hand. Now you have a ton in here. Every single card except for the, uh, the larvas are going to be played here. So this is really good. Okay, so once again, this, even though this is mana generation, you might have it in the back line, uh, back line. But once again, you want these ones here and maybe this guy's in the front line. But yeah. There is a uh, four cost, there's a six cost, and there's an eight cost card in here. You really need as much as possible. This is good to play in the back line, and then you can raid on this character later if you need to. But yeah, it's a pretty decent color card. Pretty strong. I mean, it's it's pretty weak, but you draw a card. So. Next off, it's your four finals of the deck. This is leave the rest to me. Three cost, two AP up, final. If you have no life, you place one back. Pretty simple. Nothing crazy here. Next off, we have our first Kaiju number eight. This is a four cost. This is a tech one. I'm running only two of these. So four cost, Kaiju number eight, impact negate. You're usually not going to be using it for the impact negate. You want it to be a very strong board, uh, a very strong body on the board, as well as a target for your mysterious larva. And also the active is very powerful. Plus active plus 3000. Now we have the Kafka Hibino. This is the raid cards, four costs. So on play, you play one green that's two or less from your hand rested. Once again, a really good for swarming the board. Main, when in front line, you can rest this card. So the, the 
when you actually rage with this, you can use this right away. You can you can go ahead and draw one card. So you might be thinking it's really bad you're resting it. However, you can discard one card to get 500 and bring it back up. So every turn, if this stays on the field, including the turn that you summon it, you could rest it to sift through and then discard one to bring it back up. There are benefits later that you're going to see that has to do with if a character is rested or not. So this is one of those ways where you can get that sort of step before you discard to bring it back up. So a pretty strong card overall. It, unfortunately, it doesn't like remove anything from the opponent's board or graveyard, but it helps you sift. And you can tell there's a lot of sifting in here because you're looking for nothing but Kaiju number eights, specifically these last uh, couple cards coming up. This is Clenched Chief. This is your four specials of the deck. It's a five cost, which is pretty expensive. You're going to choose one character on your energy's front line, and then you move it to the energy line, and then you draw a card. If there is a Hibino or Kaiju number eight in your area, you may retire it instead. So yeah, you definitely want to retire cards, but it's not always the worst if you just move it to the energy line. By the time you maybe play this from your hand, the opponent's energy line might be full, and that's another really good scenario. You can choose up to one of their opponent's cards, which is probably going to be like a raid card or something. You move into the energy line, and if there's four, they have to remove one from the game. So you essentially do destroy one of their cards if you play it in that regard. So here we go. Two more cards. Kaiju number eight, these six costs. This one is a raid off of Kafka. On play, choose one character on your opponent's front line, 3,000 or less, and retire it. Pretty decent however if it's your turn you can rest this character so the the the, the turn that you play this rated you can rest it to get four thousand instead and you could also if you're active you can do this instead if you're just killing a three thousand you can rest this character then this character gets one thousand and impact but you have to discard one card to set this is active so you play this and then you can retire somebody you can rest it to retire somebody better then you can discard one to set it back as active or you can play it ready to go. If there's no characters on the board, you don't need to bring it back up or get impact. So you have a little bit of a leeway here, a little bit of strategic play of how you want to do this card. And of course the trigger is raid if you can. Now for the big guy of the deck. Now this one's not even a raid card. And remember all of your Kaiju number eights, which there are 10 here, you can get with the larvae, with the uh, special larvae card. It says Kaiju number eight, eight costs. This is why you have so many weak-ish early game sort of uh you know mana generator see the 2000 you want to go for this card and this card these three cards are going to win you the game these kafkas these kaijus and this last kaiju so if there are two more rested characters reduce the energy by two now there are so many energy cards in here in, in your back line in your energy line you're most likely to get to have a two four six eight four cards to be eight so you don't even have to do this but if you need to, there are ways to rest your characters, which is play, which is play it, you know, for one, which equals three actions, but this guy equals two. So it's going to be really tough to even pull that off. However, with this Kaiju 8, you remember you can rest it before you use the discard to become active ability. Same thing with him. You can rest it to draw a card and bring it back up. So if you need to play around the eight to six energy, you can do that. This character is played in active, which is an extremely powerful ability for being a 5,000 damager with two damage. Now, the ability here is on play, choose one of two characters on the opponent's front line, then you switch it to the energy line, and then the character cannot move until the start of your next turn. Really good. I mean, it's really up to debate whether or not just KOing something is even better. But once again, as I talked about with this one and the other cards, if you move a character to the energy line when they're full, they have to get rid of one. And the fact that this cannot move until the next turn means they lose a slot in the back line and they have to refill it. So you might be able to mess with their energy that way if they depend on it. So that is the Kaiju number eight deck. This one just came out, so I'm still doing a little bit of play testing, um, especially with the experimenting of the no one cost. You usually, you know, add the one cost with the on play. So you have to bounce back a card, but then that one always generates two energy. I'm going to go with just a little bit more, you know, keeping more bodies on the board with the zeros. And once we start getting the better mana generators, we're going to go ahead and move those zero costs up to just do some damage and block some stuff. So we're going to try that out and see how it goes. But yeah, I definitely never run eight. It's always 10 and maybe now 12 zero costs. So this one needs a little bit of setup and luckily you do have those cool events, the strange artifact or whatever to search for more of your stuff. 
but yeah it's it's not a decent first outing for this deck there is another um archetype which we will talk about soon and maybe make another video but definitely stay tuned for duels etc for anything that comes out english or japanese we're going to be talking about them and all that good stuff so i think overall the way that the deck is i would give it like a maybe a 6.5 out of 10 in terms of how good this is uh but it might change later all right link in the description if you want to see every single deck profile plus the videos plus my overall ranking of them thanks and i'll see you next time bye